Ladies and gentlemen, this is a real heart stopper. Please welcome physician and inventor of the mRNA vaccine, Robert Malone. From Texas, Congressman Ronnie Jackson. President and CEO, USTruce.com, Jerry Daniels. And host of Crossroads on Epoch TV, senior investigative reporter on Epoch Times, Joshua Phillip. Well, I think this is going to be a great panel because it's something that has affected probably everyone here in one way or another, and at the very least, many of your family members. Uh, it's actually interesting. Three years ago, actually at CPAC, I did my for the interviews for my documentary, uh, looking into the origins of the Wuhan coronavirus, where we thoroughly debunked the whole narrative of bat soup and the Huanan seafood market and all the lies are being told. Uh, but I think actually raised more questions on where did the virus actually come from and why are we not being told the real information? And suddenly now we're seeing that, hey, there's a lot more to this than maybe we may have thought even back then. Uh, Congressman, I know to answer some of these questions, you've actually, you're on a panel now or at a committee to investigate uh, virus origins, vaccine injuries, and the whole nine yards. Tell us where things are going with this. I know you're just now launching it. Well, that, that's great. I mean, you, you're absolutely right. You know, we were in the 118th Congress now, uh, not in the Senate, but in the House. The Republicans are in control now. One of the biggest tools that we have in our toolbox right now, uh, exactly, get, a, get us the Senate next time. We're going to be in better shape. But we have the House by a slim margin. But one of the biggest things we're going to be able to do, one of the biggest tools in our toolbox this time is going to be oversight. And one of the primo, uh, the prime oversight committees uh, that has been established is the uh, Select Committee on Coronavirus. And so I'm on that committee. We had our first hearing the other day. And uh, we are going to dig into everything that's going on. We, we had uh, you know, there'll be a different topic every time we meet. We're going to meet frequently. We're going to have witnesses in front of us. The, the encouraging thing is that as time goes on, you're going to see this. Uh, a lot of people are starting to realize that the truth is coming out. A lot of people are covering their butt right now. That's why I think to some extent you saw the Department of uh, Energy, DOE, come out and say, hey, the, you know, we're, we believe that this uh, virus originated in Wuhan. You immediately had uh, FBI Director Ray come out and confirm that, uh, that the FBI thinks that as well. Where have they been for the last two and a half, three years? You've got to ask yourself right? But, and, and everyone's known this, right? We've all known this. Common sense, you know, tells you what happened. But, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, there, are, there are whistleblowers coming out of the woodwork right now. We're going to dig into this. We had the uh, executive director of the Public Health Association in front of us, which I thought was an odd witness for the minority to bring before, because one of the biggest things, one of the biggest disasters or travesties of this entire uh, pandemic has been the fact that the American people have zero con trust and confidence in the public health sector now. None. They have destroyed that. And we're going to get that back. So we're going to look into everything. We're going to look at uh, how they lied to us about, uh, you know, uh, uh, about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the vaccine. They lied to us about lockdowns, about masks, about the education of our kids, uh, about natural immunity. There's so many things that, that are coming out every day that are, that are proving to be lies now. And we're digging into all of that. And, and on that, let, let's, have, let's have a show of hands. How, how many people here have been called conspiracy theorists? <laughs> the, right here. <laughs> hey, hey, we're all together. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, how many, of, how many here were shown to have been right about many of these things? I, I think, I, and everyone here. <laughs> and part of this is because the media has been lying to us. Uh, lo and behold, and I know you've been uh, doing some work looking into this. What has the media been doing, and why do you think they're behaving this way? You know, when you say media, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, it's like when you say Republican or a Democrat, we say the media, and, and, and as a society, we tend to put people in groups. And, and I'm going to say something that's, uh, that's rather controversial. I believe it's the media that's actually going to get us out of this. Um, well, you know, I, yes. I'd, they, I'd hope so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, they've been uh, uh, complicit with uh, misinformation uh, on their end and really kind of stopping... Um, information, whether it's related to you know, uh, treatment ahead of time, to prophylax in order to protect yourself, uh, as well as just the, the whole history of, of where it came from and, and, and uh, all the different policy decisions that have been made. But the, the, when you think of the media, I think you have to think of all-cause mortality in the same context. Uh, 
Well, so explain all, all cause mortality is basically uh, people are dying that shouldn't be dying. And, and people that are 18 to 49 are dying. These people should not be dying. It's happening every day. And the media is not reporting on it. Uh, a 10% increase in all cause mortality is a one in 200 year event, okay? A 40% increase in all cause mortality is incalculable. So when you think of the media, it's not really the media, it's Bob, it's Jane, it's Judy, it's John. At some point, Bob is gonna wake up and his son or daughter is going to die in the prime of, of their life, and they shouldn't have. And maybe, just maybe, John will be the one that says, that money that I'm getting paid, that my bought, that the job, just doing my job and doing what I'm told, doesn't satisfy him anymore. And he's gonna have to stand up for the life of his kid. And, and until that happens, until it hits home to the men and women of the media and it becomes personal, they're gonna to continue to lie to us and give us fake news, et cetera. The minute it becomes personal, and it's coming, for all you media out there, it's coming. You're just humans like we are, 10 fingers and 10 toes. You're not bad, you're not good, you're just human. And you're trying to feed your families, you have a job, and you're being told what to do by your boss. Are you willing to sacrifice your kids for money? Hmm. Well, and that, that brings up some important questions, too. I think all of us are dealing with the real situation that we, we're dealing with an overwhelming amount of contra inherently like self-contradicting information. Uh, even in fact, a lot of the narratives from you know, mainstream media has, has changed. Things that they said was fake three years ago, they're now saying is, is in fact what is the case. And you know, uh, Dr. Malone, I know you've been looking into vaccine injury and also into you know, of course the virus itself. When we're seeing these excess deaths, how, how do we make sense of this? So just a shout out to Ed Dowd and his colleagues that have captured the information from that have captured the information from the insurance actuaries. We're in a situation as acknowledged by the New York Times last February where the federal government through the CDC has been withholding key information from physicians and and medical providers, care providers and as per the New York Times, the CDC has become a weaponized arm of the current White House. The problem with withholding, there are multiple problems with withholding data, but one of the key problems about withholding data on the adverse events of these vaccines and the consequences of the lockdowns and the mask use, et cetera, is that it's preventing today's physicians from providing forward-looking care to people who are at risk for cardiac damage and stroke and other damage associated with blood clotting. By denying that these are adverse events associated with these vaccine quote-unquote products, then what you're doing is preventing physicians from getting in there and providing proactive care. This must stop. The government must become more open and transparent and they must stop infringing on our personal sovereignty. What we have here is a clear, unequivocal story of chronic government overreach over the last three years. The government has used military-grade propaganda tools against us. And that's a big deal. Well, this goes into the whole topic of fifth-generation warfare, which... You know, we were talking about COIN and Afghanistan and counterinsurgency. It's the war for hearts and minds, as they call it. We know that the WHO launched a policy going after what they call the infodemic, the information pandemic. And so however you want to frame it, there was an information war element to this. But this leads us into some of the leaks coming out now. You know, one of these Pfizer whistleblower, well, not whistleblower, undercover camera, James O'Keefe, you might have saw him. Uh, had an individual from Pfizer saying that they were looking into directed evolution. That raised some questions on, well, are they doing gain of function? What is directed evolution? Congressman, I know you're looking into some of this with Pfizer. What are you getting in terms of what Pfizer has been doing with, these type, with this type of research that could be maybe even illegal? 
Well, we don't know exactly, right? But their director of uh, vaccine development, or their you know their chief executive officer for vaccine development, was caught on tape, like you said, talking about this stuff, and clearly indicated that they were doing gain of function testing. Uh, that they were calling it something that had another cute name for it, but it was gain of function testing. But the disturbing part was that you know, well, that's disturbing enough, but that they were also doing it for financial benefit. That they were trying to come up with the next strain so they could get ahead of it, so they could keep pushing you know this vaccine development. Because you know, ask yourself if if they're lying to is about all this stuff, which they are, right? And, and the, the cover-ups being enabled by uh, social media, by big tech, by big pharma, uh, you know, by, by the mainstream media, uh, by the FDA, the, the CDC, uh, all the branches of the executive branches of government. If all of these people are trying to cover this up, what are the motivations? I'll tell you, everybody has their own motivations. I'm a firm believer that the Democrats in general, the party, their primary motivation was mail-in ballots. That's how they won this last election. They, COVID, they wouldn't have won this election without COVID and the mail-in ballots and all the crap that followed that. So I think that that, that's their motivation, but I think that what happened is uh, Big Pharma saw an opportunity here, uh, and they saw this as a major cash cow, and I think that they want to keep it going for as long as they can. They want to make it a mandatory vaccine you have to get every single year. Uh, Everyone in the world has to get one, including your kids that are six months old, which is absolutely positively ridiculous uh, and dangerous, and that's, that's malpractice in my mind. So we're going we're gonna to go after them on this, and our committee is going to get to the bottom of this, and we're going to hold Pfizer and everybody else responsible. So I'd like to uh, jump in uh, on, on this particular topic. When, when I first started doing my research, um, I thought the same thing. I thought that uh, this was about an election uh, or it was about money. Uh, and the, the deeper uh, I got into the topic, I realized that, in my personal opinion, uh, that that's really not the case. Uh, for any of you that haven't done it, just print out Agenda 21 on two pages, and uh, it's that thick. 1992, uh, these people were dead serious about, about it, and they have a timeline that they're, that they're trying to hit. Uh, Agenda 2030 is smaller, but it's, a, it's an addendum to it. So, so I think it's a little, uh, a, a little deeper than that, a little more nefarious than that. Uh, I think it's probably the most uh, well-planned PSYOP in the history of the universe. Um, and I think that, um, I, I, and I'll also say, I, I don't think that uh, uh, the average politician in Washington is aware. And I don't think that the, uh, uh, I, I don't think Democrats are evil. I think the average Democrat is just like us. We may, uh, I, think we, I think Democrats and Republicans, quite frankly, uh, would agree on 90% of policy, 90%. But, you know, the right and the left want us to think we're polar opposite ends. They want us divided, right? So there's a lot of really good people in the world. There's a lot of really good politicians fighting the fight every day. There's a lot of really great doctors. But the whole medical profession has changed where doctors are now employees. I don't know if you know that. I learned that last night. They said, hey, we're working for these big private equity-backed organizations now. We used to be independent. But all the independent doctors were the ones that got doxxed and kicked out and, and, and silenced and stuff. But the corporate doctors... They have the same um, issue that the media has. These corporate doctors are going to lose some of their family members, and they're going to have to step up and say, listen, I know I train, I know I like to make a lot of money, but I have got to get on the side of right on this and inform the American people what's really going on. That actually happened with Asim Lohatra. Um, I'm going to nitpick a little bit with your thesis, and I appreciate the logic of trying to bring us together and, of course, the conservative big tent approach. We absolutely need to bring the rest of the population, the persuadable middle, along with us. They've been hypnotized, and we need to help them break free of that. But we have something else. We, We have a culture that's developed on the West Coast. It's been actively uh, fomented. Um, It is deeply embedded in Silicon Valley and the tech sector. And uh, uh, Hannah Arndt speaks of the banality of evil. The banality of evil seems to reside in Silicon Valley right now. We see this in the Twitter files. We see this in Facebook's actions. These organizations are intimately linked with the intelligence community, and they've been weaponized against us. And somehow we have to break that link. Somehow we have to resist this culture that's coming through our schools, it's transforming our our society, it has no ethics, it believes in a utilitarian future that's fundamentally Marxist, and they are actively promoting it in every way they can in our schools, in our society, 
in our government, in every aspect of our lives. And what we've seen in the COVID crisis is just an illustration of what's coming at us on every front right now. I'll just say uh, one thing I'll point out to Jerry, I, you know, I, uh, I see where you're coming from on that, and I think that there's some truth to that. I think that, you know, uh, one of the big underlying things is, you know, WHO, people like that, globalization, the power that they get, the authority that they ultimately get from all of this, that's probably been in the, uh, cooking for a long time. Probably, you know, like you said, before it even before we even knew it was happening. But I will tell you, I'm going to disagree with you on the fact that there's a lot of good Democrats out there and that we would agree on 90% of this stuff. I work with these people every single day. It's absolutely not the case. Some of them may be good people underneath, but good people don't let... This happened to our country, right? If you're a good person, you put your politics aside. You step up to the plate and you stop this garbage, whether you're Republican or Democrat. And there are no Democrats that have been willing to do this, none. And so I, I, that, that's, that's my only two cents on that. These people are not doing their job. They are betraying this country right now. So, so we, as, uh, as as the only non-doctor on the panel, I just got uh, talked down by I'm, two. I'm uh, not a doctor either. No, 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 no. no. You, you stay out of this. All right, we got this. Um, so we, we, we have... No, 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 hold on. I, I need to respond. Okay. Just let me respond. So anyway, um, uh, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And, and, uh, uh, and Dr. Miller, what you're talking about is something that, you know, I, I, I've got kids I'm very, very close with. And uh, my youngest kid, who uh, sat in front of me one day, and I begged, and I pleaded, and I bribed, and I threatened, and I did everything I could uh, to convince him not to get the jab. And, uh, and my son looked at me uh, straight in the face. And, and again, there's a, a, a real bond, a loving relationship between my sons and I. And he said, Dad, he said, I know you're super successful at business, but I think you're just susceptible to conspiracy theories. <laughs> So that was a, a kind of wake-up call to me. Um, so what I did is, is I started doing some research on, and this is kind of to your point, and, and I understand where you're going with this. I, I started doing some research on how did they get my kid, okay? So I'm going to tell you how they got my kid and maybe some of your kids and how they got the left. So we've got about three minutes. So maybe I'm going to go so fast. Okay. <laughs> Social distancing, uh, border crisis, killing of American energy, ESG, censorship, weaponizing the federal government against citizens. Train wrecks, food processing plants uh, burning up uh, mysteriously, cows dying, chickens dying. I could go on, and every two weeks, there's a new, new problem. And it's pretty big, right? Do some research on brainwashing. Just do it. The number one component, the number one they think, thing that they do to brainwash people is fear. And people get so afraid that they change their identity rather than deal with the issue at hand. We are getting played. We are, they are flooding the zone so that we don't focus on the most important thing in society today, which is COVID. Number one, and these, and these I wouldn't even call them vaccines. They're not vaccines. It is the number one issue. My point is this. They've been brainwashed. These are, you know, but they're not bad people. They're literally afraid. And if we don't show them some compassion and understand that the reason they have the views they have is they've, they're literally scared to death. We need to learn how to unbrainwash people. Sorry. You're all good. So about uh, maybe one minute and then one minute. So hello. So quickly, key message. Uh, we have been subjected to the most massive PSYOPs propaganda campaign in the history of the Western world for three years. Second key message, there must be accountability. Yes, we need to forgive. We need to forgive those around us, our family and friends, and the poor soul in the, in the grocery line that still has the face nozzle. But people have got to be held accountable. Um, third point is that this is just the beginning. This is just the start of, as being pointed out, really a multi-pronged strategy to s subvert the United States by people who do not believe in an independent nation state, who believe in a one world order, a world government that's not elected. And it's up to us to stop that. Hey, we... 
We got we got three more minutes. We got three more minutes of uh, Mr. Schlapp himself. So, <laughs> Congressman, any response? I'll just say real quick that I really appreciate CPAC. I appreciate Matt and Mercedes. I appreciate all of you here because you keep the light shining on these issues. And without you and your support and your your uh, interest in, in what's going on in this country, uh, we'd be in real trouble. I will tell you, uh, as a member uh, of the, uh, the Select Committee on Coronavirus and as a, a member of the Republican House of Representatives, not too many people came to Congress looking for this fight. I came to Congress looking for a fight, looking for this fight. I'm going to do something about it. I promise you. I don't give a damn what they say about me. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you being here. So we, we, were, we were graciously given a few more minutes. So, um, by the way, folks, if you want to read a good book on menticide, you can read Rape of the Mind. Um, and really, it really emphasizes what we are facing, which was a massive information campaign. And I know we have three folks here on different ends of that. We have a, you know, really some from the inside who refused to be silenced, even though they tried everything they could. We have someone investigating this from the, you know, congr- from the congressional standpoint. We have someone really from more of the business and independent standpoint coming out, and myself a journalist. I think when we're facing this, I guess just last statements on what we can do when facing an information campaign like this, because we are facing people, as you mentioned, who have been misled. Do we throw them under the bus, or do we try to show them how they've been misled? Last thoughts. I think the adversary needs to be respected. They're very good at what they do. They plan this for a long period of time. This is a global uh, initiative. Uh, I don't remember in my lifetime <clears throat> ever hearing multiple heads of state repeating the same slogan in my life, build back better. It's never happened in my lifetime, right? And then when we watch what happened with COVID, they all use the same crazy methods of dealing with it, right? Social distancing, mask. There's 50 plus reports over history told us masks did not stop viruses. We knew this. And then all of a sudden, uh, the other day, one drops says, hey, by the way, the mask didn't work. I mean, you know, it's 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 insane. Um, So if you think this is a local problem, it's not. This is a global problem. I personally, you know, I have nothing but respect for our government. I had the privilege of touring our capital the other day. And I mean, it's awe inspiring. I don't know that. The political side is going to be difficult. It's going to have to be the people that push this. It's going to have to be the the media. It's going to have to be the doctors. It's going to have to be you guys getting mad enough as you see friends and relatives die that shouldn't die. Like, they're they're trying to kill you. It's a fact. I'll say one last thing, and I'll shut up and and, and leave it to the the experts. But um, there was a chart that came out the other day that showed that um, uh, the VAERS data, more people are dying in Republican states. Well, I've done enough research to know that VAERS is very underreported. So what I did is I went and I said, hey, I wonder if I could find excess mortality by state. And son of a gun, I found it. Did you know the top 26 states as a percentage of the people that are vaccinated in excess mortality are all red? 24 out of 26 states, all red. You don't think there's an agenda, there's an agenda. They don't want free thinkers. And if you don't defend yourself, it's going to be too late. Last. I'll, I'll be real quick and turn it over to Dr. Malone. I just want to say, like, the, you know, the, the web of misinformation and the deceit that they've been sowing for a long time, it's, it's unraveling right now before our eyes. I do agree with you that one of the people that are, or one of the entities that's probably going to get us out of this in the long run is going to be the press because they're going to turn on these people whenever it's obvious that they've been lying. And, and we're going to make sure that, you know, that we make that obvious. But you'll see as, as whistleblowers come out uh, and as uh, we start having hearings and stuff, we're going to see that, you know, that, that, that they did lie to us. They did spread, they spread misinformation. Uh, the left did, the White House did, and, and that, that's going to become obvious, and then the press is going to slowly start reporting some of that. Uh, your friends and neighbors who, uh, who ha- have uh, not been like-minded with you are going to start seeing things your way, I think. The main thing is get out, get the vote out. We've got to get the ha- we got to get the Senate. We've got to keep the House. Just keep giving us momentum, and we'll make a difference, I promise. And I have Dr. Malone. Three points. The vaccine injured need to stop being gaslit. They need to be recognized. They need to be yes. compensated. They need to be treated. Second point, there are treatment protocols coming online. Paul Merrick in particular, I wish to give a shout out for. There is hope for all of us in terms of those that have been vaccine damaged and wish to clear the spike protein from their body. There are new technology platforms. Third, um, I want to confirm, 
this has been a conspiracy. There is no question there has been nefarious actors. Okay? They have exploited this for financial reasons, and that's not a conspiracy theory. That's truth. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>